Hi everyone. I first want to start out just saying thank you for all you've been doing. I have had the honor and the privilege to be connecting with so many administrators, literacy coaches, and educators across the country, and I am just so overwhelmed by all that you're doing to connect with your kids, to get your kids to connect with each other, um, and to really make sure you're setting the foundation for what may be a longer haul than we all thought and helping your kids figure out how to have a living learning environment um, for these next few weeks. So I've been thinking a lot about classroom libraries. I'm pretty passionate about classroom libraries. I really believe they're like the hub of everything that happens in our classrooms. Um, it's it's where kids go to find their stories. It's where kids go to meet new characters. It's it's where they go to have conversations with each other. Um, it's where teachers go to find the tools that they need to bring their literacy vision to life, um, both in terms of their curriculum and in terms of their students. And so I know equity has been on all of our minds in terms of access and how are we making sure we're getting kids all the things that they need. And I've been taking a lot of coursework um, thinking about that and spent some time thinking about, is there a way we could create a space virtually that could act as a classroom library? I've been playing with this idea for the last week um, with some teachers in schools and it's kind of working um, and I want to show you the idea not because this idea is going to work for you but I'm hoping it um, sparks a way for you to make this happen um, for your kids probably in a different way depending on what platforms you are but I think um, if you see the ideas behind it, um, it I think it could work with most platforms and I've tried it in a few different schools um, and it's working even in different platforms there. So um, let me show you what I'm thinking and I can't wait to hear back what you're thinking. Um, and I hope we continue to grow this idea together because I want kids to not only have access to books, I want them to have their classroom library. <laughs> we all know how important that space is and we advocate for it. Um, and even our public libraries and our school libraries are closed right now. Um, and I just, I'm feeling this need for kids to have this virtual space. So let me show you what I'm thinking. So I decided to use um, Google Drive because um, most of my clients and, and teachers that I'm working with are using Google. Um, but I think this could also work on a Padlet board. Um, it could even work in Pinterest if you had a private. And um, Padlet's where my head first went, but I, I really tried um, Google since so many um, educators I'm collaborating with are using that platform. So um, what I tried to do was create something, um, a document called a virtual classroom library. I'm gonna show you what that looks like. Um, Right, and this, it would change depending on your kids. It would change depending on what they said they were interested in reading. Um, all of that would happen. But I'm working with um, a few teaching teams that are going to be moving into character studies. They want to get their kids, um, we, they surveyed kids to find out the kinds of books that they were looking. Um, we thought about different genres that we haven't had enough time to get to as much as we would have liked to this year, like poetry. Um, so. We want to make sure kids still have an opportunity to read nonfiction and informational. We really wanted to, while we know we're going to be digging into a particular unit, we wanted to still give kids choice and voice um, in what they wanted to read. So after surveying kids and hearing their point of view and looking at the curriculum for where kids might want to start digging into the type of books we're talking about, the types of characters we're going to explore or themes we're exploring, we begin to think about what might be the baskets we would be building in our own classroom libraries. So if we were going to be creating uh, baskets for our kids' needs, for their interests, for their priorities, for their passions, and for our curricular needs, what might those be? So we, we came up a few. Um, we came up with uh, point of view. Um, a lot of third, fourth, fifth graders are really digging into this idea of, of point of view and considering point of view. A lot of kids want to laugh right now. They said they're looking for funny books. I don't blame them. 
Uh, social distancing got you down. Stories of friendship. People are missing their friends. I love the child who came up with that title. Um, poetry. We want to keep poetry. So we're going to plan on adding some poetry. Spooky books. We had some friends who wanted spooky books. I think we have a lot of friends missing sports right now. They're not outside playing sports. They can't watch sports, so they can read about sports. Uh, characters who make a difference. Learning about the world. And now the opposite of kids who wanted to laugh. We had some kids who wanted to cry. Right, so we begin to think about these baskets. And if, if this was our virtual classroom library and kids were going to be invited to sort of build their stack from these, how could we do this? To so begin to think about all the publishers, authors, um, distributors who are being so generous right now and what they're offering for free digitally and the fair use laws and the changes that they've made that we can be reading aloud or showing some of these books in a private setting. So I'm envisioning something like this being private, meaning just within your school and kids having access, but kids not being able to take things out of this, so that we would still be honoring those fair use laws um, and that this could all be taken down come June 30th um, when we no longer can be sharing books that way. So let me show you what I did. Um, each of these would be hyperlinked um, to a digital bin. Um, so this one is called Point of View, and I'm just gonna show you an example of what that might look like. So if kids were to click on that, they then would have access to some books. Now we would put lots of books in here. For now, I've just put a few. Um, and what I'm trying to show here is that um, there's different, you can do more than one publisher. So a different pond is one of my favorites. Um, it, I love that it's graphic um, and I love how it digs into a point of view and layers of meaning. So if someone were to click on that, it would be brought to um, that website and then kids could go ahead and read that book. Now, one of the things we've noticed as we're trying this is if you're not logged in, to whatever um, platform you're going to be sending or distributor or you know web link if they're not logged in they're going to be asked to logged in in most of these sites if you're logged in if you're not logged in once you log in it still brings you right to the book but you can see i was logged in so when i hit that it brought me right to the book um, that was suggested right and we've tried this with lots of different um, both of these happen to be with epic um, but there's lots of other ones that we've been trying. So that would be if we were looking at point of view. We also tried some for laugh out loud. Again, the digital bin, the hyperlinks can have to be connected in some virtual platform like a Google Drive, um, Dropbox, something where um, it's, it's virtual, that digital bin. You could put links to another website you could put links to a YouTube video that you've privately recorded and uploaded here. You could show a book on here. Kids could record themselves reading a book, right? Lots of different ways for you to be able to put things in here. You could put images in, you could put infographics in, you could put um, Pixar video clips in here, right? There's lots of different ways for you to create a bin that kids can almost envision them going in a basket and choosing what it is that they wanna read. So you can see I used Epic for Splat the Cat. I used Epic for LARF. Um, just gonna see if I, so this one, Bad Case of Stripes, I used a different one. So let's just show how that worked. This one's on Storyline Online. Again, once I click that, I'm already logged in. So it takes me right to a Bad Case of Stripes being read aloud. So we could put books in there that kids can listen to, books that kids can watch someone reading aloud on video, books that they can read on their own. So let's go back for a minute. Um, so the way I did this um, is really just creating in a Google Doc, putting in a chart, putting different colors as background in those charts. I just went downstairs and took some pictures um, of baskets with some books that I had so it looked like a classroom library. I think you can do it in lots of different ways. I don't think it has to be that fancy. Um, and then I just put the title of the type of books kids wanted, and then the ones that I hyperlinked, I just added this, I inserted, I went up to insert a hyperlink, and then I put it there. Now that particular document was created separately. So let me see if I can find that one for a minute. Uh, sorry, that's a different one. Here we go. So this is the LOL 
document, this is the one that contains all the hyperlinks. I had to copy this. You see how I copied the hyperlink there? I went back to virtual. I highlighted LOL. I then went up to insert hyperlink and I put the link from the LOL Google Doc that becomes the digital bin. Just to show you another example. I have another group of teachers and kids who are about to begin a theme study. So again, we talked to them about some themes they were interested in studying and what was important to them. Um, and we began to think about some mentor texts that we might create for studying theme. Things like family matters, looking at the bright side, the, also social distancing got you down, friendship matters. We shared that from another group. They loved that idea. Thinking outside the box, bravery, never give up, make a difference, choose kindness, question. So one of the things that you know could be interesting for this, and again, here's one we started for Family Matters. I'm sorry to put some books in there like Peter's Chair, Blackout, Sophia Martinez, Mallory's Guide to Boys, Brothers, Dads, and Dogs, right? We used Epic for this one. I used Epic for that one. Yep, for most of these, I think I did use Epic, um, but you could use lots of different ones. I think what's also interesting is figuring out a way, right? We start to think about agency that I do love this idea of a virtual library or a virtual bin, because what I, I want to have happen for kids is for them to be able to choose what they want to read, but still have interaction with each other as a community in an asynchronous way. So this will allow kids to communicate with each other um, around books, right? You could have another platform where kids are talking about books or recommending the books that they liked. And one group next week, we're gonna be starting to figure out how we can get kids to add books to the basket. Um, and, and really, we know that they can. We're trying to figure out from a technological standpoint, how do we wanna do that, um, especially with respecting um, security and such that we may not wanna leave these as open documents. Um, so they may not be able to edit them, but they certainly could um, put in a in another format books that they want to recommend to go into a basket and then we could add them um, and so that would be one way that they could communicate with teachers um, what types of books that they've read that they think should go in there if they have books at home or books that they're finding on one of the websites that we're sending them um, to read that they could certainly think about that as we begin to think about how we're going to get kids together in book clubs and talking across books either synchronously or asynchronously they could also start to form clubs around some of these baskets um, and read books together which could be really fun so i have some other things i'm going to share over the next few days but the first one i really wanted to think about with everyone is like how do we bring this space that we know really brings us together as a community at a time when i think we all need community so deeply um, virtually. So that's how I did it. I can't wait to see what you try and what you do with it. Um, but I think don't try to do it alone. Um, my advice is work as a team, work as a school, work as a district. Um, different people could take different baskets and start to put some in. And honestly, I think as soon as we figure out a way to let the kids help out, they're going to take this just like they would in our classrooms. They'll be off and running and they're going to figure out how to create these baskets for themselves. Thanks everyone. I can't wait to hear um, what you try and what you learn so we can all keep learning. Access matters, equity matters. We need to try to figure out our best ways to get what we can get into our kids' hands. Um, and I'm going to show some ways that we can also do this um, for some of our kids who may not have access um, at home. Um, but showing them what this library is um, and sending them text that we might be able to put into some of the baskets that they're interested in. Take care, everyone.